Thank you, Miss Becky. If you are a child of the king, you're going to hear a trumpet call one day. And we're going to look up and see Jesus face to face. Amen? And if you're not a child of the king, then you'll be left behind. Here's one of my favorite. I want you probably, I've probably shared this with you before, but it's been many years ago. But this is my favorite um, little joke to get you loosened up a little bit before the sermon this morning. I want you to imagine this. It's an old story, maybe a hundred years ago. It says a generation ago. The story is told of a generation ago when an old farmer brought his family to the big city for the very first time. They'd never been to the big city. They'd always lived out in the country. They had never seen buildings so tall or sites so impressive. And the farmer dropped his wife off at a department store and took his son with him to the bank, the tallest of all the buildings in the whole city. As they walked into the lobby, they saw something else they had never seen before. Two steel doors opened. It was an elevator. Well, they stood there and looked at it for a minute, and a not-so-pretty and elderly, heavy-set woman walked in, and the big doors closed behind her. The dial over the top of the elevator swept to the right, then back to the left. The doors opened, and a beautiful young lady came walking out. The farmer was amazed. He turned to his boy and said, Son, go get your mama. I'm going to run her through that thing. At the rapture, we will be taken up and we will be transformed and we will have resurrected bodies according to the precious word of God. The title of my message today is Like a Thief in the Night. Have you ever been spooked before? Have you ever had something happen that literally took you by surprise and scared the living daylights out of you? We all have. Something something that snuck up on you and took you by complete surprise. I've got a wife. I've got the most jumpiest. My wife's the most jumpiest person in the whole wide world. I can't never scare her if I do. It's her kill me. So I know better. But one time, one time stands out. If you're like me, this has happened several times. But one thing stands out. When Levi was born, our third son, when Levi was born, y'all remember how Patty always had those kidney stone problems. We, I, since I've been at Shatner, I probably took her to the emergency room 20 times with kidney stones. And finally, they, they corrected that problem for her. But um, when Levi was born, he was only about two weeks old. But here we had to go to the hospital for kidney stones. And they, they admitted Patty overnight at that, that time. So the next day, we were in the hospital room. And we were all, we'd been up all night in the emergency room, so we were tired, and they brought a little crib in for Levi to sleep in. And, and Patty was in the hospital bed, and I was asleep in a chair or a sofa or something. I don't remember. We were all three asleep. And all of a sudden, nurses were running up and down the hall, uh, and, and some lady was screaming, my baby, my baby, someone took my baby. And the nurses were running in and out of the rooms looking for this baby scared the living daylights out of us. We woke up and, and immediately we saw our baby Levi laying there in the crib and I grabbed him, but my wife was crying because you can imagine she got a newborn baby and somebody stole a baby. We thought it was a missing baby drill. And I was not a happy camper and I complained. A few minutes later there were two men in suits standing in our room apologizing. They should have at least warned us about it. But like a thief in the night, sometimes things in life just catch us by complete surprise. Some things happen in a split second with no warning whatsoever. Uh, this is the way that it will be when Jesus comes to rapture the church. Yes, Jesus is coming one day. He has promised in the Word of God that He will come again, and that we can count on for sure. God has never made a promise that He did not keep. We don't have to be surprised that Jesus is coming again, but when He comes will surprise us. When He comes will surprise us because He will come as a thief in the night. With no warning, He will come when we least expect it. What we must do is be prepared. We must be ready at all times. The Bible was very clear that no one knows the day or the time, not even the Son, not even Jesus, only the Father. 
knows when that time will come. It, it's already been determined long ago, even before the creation of the world. Today, Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father, according to the Bible. Jesus is sitting at the right side of the Father, anxiously awaiting the word, go get my children. And I believe, I fully believe, with everything going on in the world today, that Jesus is sitting on the edge of his seat. I believe he's sitting on the edge of his seat. Why is Jesus coming again one day? To rapture the church, to rapture those of us who have trusted in him as our personal savior and to take us to heaven, to spend eternity with him. If we are saved, if, if we have asked for the forgiveness of our sins and we believe in Jesus and his death, burial, and resurrection, then we will one day go and live for all of eternity in heaven. And I hope that makes you full of joy this morning. That is where we, we will go when we die unless the rapture takes place before we die. And if raptured, if we're raptured, then that's where we'll go. But if we are not saved, then we will go to a terrible place of eternal torment called hell after we die. Those of us who have never trusted in Jesus Christ, those who do not believe in him cannot and will not go to heaven. If the rapture takes place and we are not saved, then we will be left behind. How do we know for sure if we are saved? Well, would we just know the Holy Spirit is taking up his abode within us, and we just know if we have asked Jesus to save us, then we will know he's right here. And also, I believe that we will at least have the desire to live our lives for Jesus. Even if we're not, we at least have the desire to live our lives for Jesus and be involved in the church because we love him so. The Bible says if we love him, we will obey his commandments. If saved, then we will be different than those who are not saved. Uh, part of his commands is to worship him within the confines of the local church. He is our heavenly father. And if we love him, then we will want to go to his house, which is the church. We will want to hang out with other believers because we have this common bond of knowing Jesus and belonging to him. Personally, I was raised in a Christian home and raised in church. My parents took me to church every time the doors were open. And they led me to the Lord right before I turned seven years old. And I remember growing as a young man in my relationship with the Lord when I was 11, 12, 13, 14. Growing in my relationship with the Lord when I was 14, I was called to preach. And, and I preached twice when I was 14. But then when I was 15, I wandered away from the Lord for a long, long time. But I know that I was saved. Let's look at some scripture that shows us this promise that Jesus is coming again. John 14, verses 1 through 6 says this. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me. That you also may be where I am. You know the, play, the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? And then in verse 6, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus has promised those of us that have been saved and belong to him that he has gone to prepare a place for us. And it's a wonderful place called heaven where there will be no more tears and no more pain no more death. Heaven will be worship 24-7. So I hope that you enjoy church. But we just can't imagine what heaven is going to be like. You know, I see things on TV, uh, uh, places in the United States or places in the world that I've never had the privilege of going to. And, and I think I'll never be able to go. But can you imagine what heaven's going to be like? It'll make things on earth just pale to comparison. And he has promised to return one day to take us to be there with him. He, he loves us so much that he laid down his life for us by dying on the cross to take away our sins. And he wants us to spend 
eternity with them in heaven. He's promised to come again to take us to be with Him for all of eternity. And contrary to what you may hear today, there's only one way to be prepared for this journey. You can't be good enough in your own strength to get to heaven. You, you can't believe in and worship other gods or other religions, or you can't just come up with your own ideas and then go to heaven. Jesus is the only way. He said again, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you are here today and you've never trusted in Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, then you can do that today. If you would like, He is the only way. There's no other way to heaven. There's no other way to be prepared when He comes again, which who knows could be today. But you must know Jesus. Do you know Him today? Do you know Him for sure? I'm convinced that there's a lot of people in this world who claim to know Him and may even think that they know Him, but their lives do not show it. If we are truly saved, then we should at least have the desire to spend time with the Lord at church and at home. How much time do you spend with Jesus? Uh, the Bible says that saved people will produce fruit. Are you producing fruit? Do you know this Jesus that is coming again? Do you have peace? That's a, a, a good question to ask. Do you have peace? We don't know when He is coming, just that He is coming, and it could be today, it could be any time. Again, are you ready? Have you made your peace with God? He died upon the cross to pay for your sins, but you have to acknowledge that you have sinned and ask Him to forgive you of your sins. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And in Romans 6, 23, he says, For the wages of sin is death, but, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. You must be saved in order to go to heaven. You must be ready. Are you ready if Jesus wants to come back today? Please trust in Him today if you've not done so. If you are not yet saved, then don't put it off any longer. He's coming again one day, and it may be too late. And when He comes, it will be too late. There's no second chances. We must be ready now. And maybe you are confused and you think that you are saved, but not for sure. This is something that you need to be for sure. Let's, let's talk after the service and make sure you can respond during the invitation. There's nothing to be ashamed of or embarrassed by. None of us were saved at one time. We all had to come to a time in our life that we trusted in Christ. You need to make sure this is the most important decision that you will ever make in your entire lifetime. And I don't believe that you're sitting here today by accident. I'm convinced that God arranged it so that you would be here and be challenged to trust in Him as your personal Savior. And it could be your last warning. I don't know. I pray that everyone here today is saved, but maybe not. And we all have loved ones and friends that are not saved. So... If so, let's try to get him them to come to our revival that will take place for these four Sundays. The gospel will be presented, and we are praying that many will come and, and, and be saved. But Jesus is coming one day, and we don't know when. We can't put off our salvation till the last minute because we never know when Jesus is coming again or when this life may be over. We just don't know when. It could be any time. It could be today. We have no promise of tomorrow according to the Word of God. Look with me at 1 Thessalonians 5, 1 through 6. It says, Now, brothers, about the times and dates, we do not need to write to you, for you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying peace and safety, Destruction will come on them suddenly as labor pains on a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers, are not in darkness, so that this day should surprise you like a thief. You are all sons of the light and sons of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness, so then let us be like others 
who let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be alert and self-control. Be alert, be watchful. That the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. We will have no warning. We must be ready now and always. If, if someone is a thief and he's going to steal from you, then he will not notify you of when he is coming. He's going to sneak up on you when you least expect it. We must be ready. The way things are headed and the way things are going in the world today, I believe that the time is very near. We don't know for sure, no one does, but everything going around, going on around us today is leading up to that time when the eastern skies will split and Jesus shall appear to take us home to be with him. And that will be a glorious day for those of us that are, that are children of God. Listen to these words from Acts chapter 1 of how Jesus will return one day in the same way that he has ascended up into heaven after his resurrection. Acts chapter 1 verses 8 through 11 says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. Think about, try to imagine that. He was taken up into the into the sky and a cloud hid them from their sight they were looking intently up into the sky as he was going when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them men of galilee they said why do you stand here looking into the sky this same jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven this is real, folks. He will come again one day, maybe tomorrow, maybe today, maybe before I even finish this sermon, and he will come in the same way that he left, and he will come when we least expect it. Are you ready? For those of us who are ready, it will be a glorious day. For those of us who are not ready, for those who do not know Jesus, it will not be a good day because... They will be left behind. Nobody wants to be left behind. Uh, the world in which we live today is full of turmoil and wars and rumors of wars and destruction and sin. And it seems as if mankind is turning to everything except God. Instead of things getting better, uh, things are getting much worse by the man. And day by day, are, are you turning to other things other than God? We need to be about telling people about Jesus because time is running out. We must realize the urgency of the hour. We need to be more concerned about the eternal destinies of others. Invite people to come with you next week. I've got a, a, a really neat story I want to share in my sermon next Sunday. We may be saved, but what about our family? What about our neighbors and the people that we work with and the people that we run into and talk with every day? Uh, we must be busy telling others about Jesus before it's too late. My biggest regret of all those years of being away from the Lord and drinking and drugging and living a raucous lifestyle, my biggest regret is not telling my friends about Jesus when I was partying. And I know I was a Christian, but I never told my friends about the Lord. When Jesus ascended up into the clouds and when he promised to come again one day, he promised us the Holy Spirit would give us the power to be his witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and Union City and Collins Park and Fairburn and Atlanta and unto the very ends of the earth. We must tell others time is running short. Throughout Scripture, throughout the Word of God, we see prophecies being fulfilled. And throughout Scripture, we see the signs that we see today that are showing us that the end is near. Times are getting rougher and tougher, and the world is getting worse and worse. The world is going to see 
a terrible time period after the rapture called the tribulation. After Jesus comes and raptures the church and takes us up to be the, in the heaven, uh, there's going to become what's called the tribulation. That's what people. This is what people will face if they were caught unsaved and are not ready when Jesus comes to rapture the church. He will take those of us who are saved on to heaven and then His wrath will begin to unfold on this world. And for seven years after we are raptured and in heaven with the Lord, this world will see turmoil like never before, like we cannot even imagine. The Antichrist will come upon the scene deceiving people and the following him and deceiving people and all kinds of chaos and destruction will occur. And we don't want anyone to be left, left behind. If we are saved, then we will not be here. And the Bible says our citizenship is in heaven because we have been redeemed. Some people believe that we will still be here during the tribulation period, but the Bible says that we will not. Those of us who are saved will have already been raptured, and we will be in heaven with our Savior. Folks, we've got to take it more seriously, this thing of letting people die without knowing Jesus. Jesus is coming again one day, and it may be soon, it may be very soon, and I hope and pray that we are all ready. I hope and pray that your family and your friends and your neighbors are, are all ready, or those closest to you ready. But I also hope that we won't leave any people behind. Wish we wouldn't leave anyone behind. The Bible says that God hopes that all will believe that He doesn't want any to perish. But unfortunately, there are many who do not know Him do not know Jesus and they will be left behind when the rapture when he raptures the church have you ever thought about what it would be like to be lost what would it be like well we, we just wouldn't know anybody we just wouldn't know anybody the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 2 14 that the gospel is foolishness to those who do not believe to those of us who believe, it's, it's, the, it's the key to salvation. But for those who do not believe, it's foolishness. Lots of people just don't know any better unless we tell them, unless we show them. Instead, they will fall for all kinds of lies and all kinds of false beliefs and myths. They may be deceived into false, some false religion or cult, or they may claim to not even believe in God. They may think that we just kind of exist here on earth with no higher power, but they were wrong. Now, there is a God who created us and who loved us enough that He sacrificed His own Son on the cross to save us from our sins. And some people may even believe this and know this, but they're just putting it off and keep putting it off. Where do we come from? Where Where do we come from? Lost people are so confused and don't know what to believe. They so many people just conjure up something in their own mind and, and they believe it themselves. You ever heard of the Big Bang Theory? Uh, this, this is what the Big Bang Theory means. Some people believe that once there was two black clouds of mass that bumped into each other. And although there were no gases, somehow that somehow caused some type of explosion. And that was how this world got started. And then an atom that we don't know where this atom came from, this atom split. And then somehow water came from nowhere. And in this water, these little tadpoles formed out of nothing. And then for some strange reason, this atom split. And even though they had no brain whatsoever, we decided to grow arms and legs. And eventually over millions of years, we became man. Now, isn't that silly? I heard this story a few years ago, and the guy that said that his biology teacher tried to pass this junk off on them, accused him of being a Christian because he didn't believe it. He questioned her theory, and he said he was lost at the time. It was before he was even saved. God must have been working on him through some of this. You know, God has a way of calling us unto himself and drawing us to Him by the Holy Spirit. If you're here this morning or if you're watching online, 
God has a way of calling us to himself and, his, and drawing us to him by the Holy Spirit. If you're here this morning, uh, or if you're watching online and you are not 100% sure that you are saved, and he may be calling you this morning. He, has he been working on you lately? Has he been trying to get your attention? What about those of you here today that maybe you are saved, but somehow, you somehow over the years, you've wandered away from God. Uh, you don't go to church anymore. You're too busy doing your own thing, but you know that you belong to God and He wants you to come back home. Are you tired of messing up your life and being miserable? Don't you want to come back to Jesus this morning? I don't care how bad things have gotten. I don't care what you've done. Jesus is there with wide open arms waiting to hold you once again. His arms wide open again. That's how he took me back in in 1990 after many years of disobedience. God is most likely speaking to your heart this morning. You see, you're not here by accident or you're not watching this online by accident. God is in control and he wanted you here today to hear this message so that he could speak to you. Is he trying to get your attention this morning? Or are you listening? Are you not saved? Or are you backslidden? There's a song I heard one time about a little boy flying a kite. And the kite just keeps going higher and higher and higher up in the air until it's completely out of sight. It's hidden in the clouds. And the little girl asks, what's he doing? And he says, I'm flying a kite. And she says, well, I can't see it. How do you know it's there? And he says, I feel the tug. Feel the tug. That's how it is when God is calling us to Him. The Holy Spirit tugs at our hearts. And we know He is there because we feel the tug. Is He tugging at your heart today? He wants you to trust in Him and be saved today. Do you feel the tug? He wants you to come back home. As Christians, we know what this tugging in our heart feels like. God continuously speaks to our hearts in this way. After we are saved, is he, is he speaking to you this morning? Is He tugging at your heart in regard to something? I felt this tugging at my heart 34 years ago. And praise God, He called me home. If God is tugging at your heart for any reason this morning, then come this morning and kneel in this altar. Or just sit on the front row if you can't kneel. And cry out to God. And He will hear your, hear your cry. And He will save you. If you are already saved but have walked away from Him, He's waiting with open arms to receive you back into His fold. Jesus is coming again one day, and it could be today. Are you ready? Are you ready if Jesus comes today? Proverbs 25, 25 says, Like cold water to a weary soul is good news from a distant land. I know I've shared this story with you before, but it's one of my favorites. Uh, a young man and a young lady was getting married, and they were so in love, they could not wait until their wedding day came, and, and they just could not wait. And the, the pastor that was doing their counseling, he, he knew that they, boy, this young couple's got it bad. They cannot wait to get married. And finally, the wedding day comes, and the wedding ceremony began, and the, the pastor and the groom came out and stood at the altar, and the, the bride was coming down the aisle and the, the groom just couldn't sit still. He just he was just so fidgety and, and wandering up, swaying back and forth and, and the pastor just knew he just couldn't wait. He just he just grabbed him by the arm and said, Go get her. Just pushed him out and said, Go get her. And he went halfway up the aisle and met her and brought her down the aisle as she was coming down the aisle. That, that's the way it is. Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father, waiting on the Heavenly Father to say, go get her. Go get her. Go get my bride. If God is speaking to your heart in any way this morning, please, please promise me or promise, better yet, promise God that you'll be here next week. I've got a, a really neat story that I want to share with you next Sunday. Or invite someone to come with you. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for our time looking into your precious word this morning and Father, we just thank you for the promise that you're coming back 
that Jesus is coming back one day to, to rapture the church. That means to rapture Christians, to rapture believers, to rapture those of us that have placed our faith and trust in you. And Lord, we thank you for the promise of heaven. We thank you for the promise of the rapture. And Lord, we look forward to that day that we hear those trumpets and we get to see our Savior, Jesus, face to face. But Lord, we pray for those that may not be ready, those that may that we have in our families and our neighborhoods and our workplaces, Lord, those that, that may be watching online, Lord, we pray that, that they would understand that Jesus loved them enough to die for them and that they would come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, Lord. We just thank you for loving us and all that you're going to do and thank you for, for forgiving us of our sins and dying for us. In Jesus' sweet and precious and holy name we pray, amen. Our invitation hymn is hymn number 294. If you'll stand with me and we'll sing Have Thine Own Way, Lord. <laughs> 